evening and welcome to the regular city council meeting for the city of St. Peter. The, e the day is Monday, June 27th, 2022. It is 7 p.m. We are officially called to order. Would all rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First up on our agenda is approval of the agenda. Are there any revisions or corrections to the agenda as distributed? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The agenda is approved. Next up, uh, approval of the minutes. The minutes are printed in the packet starting on page five. Are there any revisions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, uh, the minutes are approved. Visitors, right now is the time on our agenda where we schedule visitors who'd like to speak on any agenda items. Are there any members of the audience who'd like to address the council on any agenda item? Seeing none, we will take general visitor comments. Members of the audience wishing to address the council concerning items not on the agenda may do so at this time. Please come forward. We're gonna ask for your name and your address for the record. Either one. Okay. All right, my name is uh, Nick Jansen. My address is 40909 County Road 20, just outside of St. Peter. Um, we'll give you five, five minutes to speak. I'll keep my eye on the clock. If you are getting close to five, I'll try to give you a heads up when you've got a minute left. Okay. Uh, I'm here with a group of citizens uh, on behalf of trying to maybe get something new in St. Peter. There's a lot of local communities in the area that are doing this, um, and that is ATV and side-by-side -side usage in city limits. Uh, there's a multitude of different ways that local communities are doing this. Uh, places like New Ulm, New Prague, Cleveland, uh, Casota, lots of local areas and even you know suburbs of the twin cities the outer suburbs bigger population areas that are doing this with success and um, i brought along some information this is a very brief uh, overview of what monticello is doing and it shows about permits and things to do things you can't do of course each town is a little bit different as to how or where they're going to allow them, but it's something that I think uh, the city is missing out on. Um, whether it's you know bringing revenue into town for our restaurants, local businesses, gas stations. Uh, there's a lot of us in the ATV side by side community that uh, don't really think about going this direction because there's no way in or out of town, no way to be able to go to any of those places. Just simple things like, you know, not having to haul, I mean, these things hold anywhere from 10 to 15 gallons of gas. So being able to go down to the station, fuel them up without loading them on a trailer, you know, when it could be, you know, a few blocks of driving. Everything now is able to keep up with posted speed limits, um, even better than I would consider like mopeds and things like that. More visibility, um, a lot of them, most of them have brake lights, uh, some have aftermarket turn signal kits, horns, so things that a lot of places might consider street legal. So um, just kind of uh, wanted to put the bug in the city's ear and see if it is, you know, something that we can think about or, or at least talk about here in St. Peter um, because I think we're missing out and a lot of potential revenue that could come into town. So. I have these I can pass around everybody can have a copy kind of shows like I said what the city of Monticello is doing and uh, uh, very general but things that would apply here as well so thank you very much okay mm -hmm. any but, but, would you be able to send us a list of cities and maybe can send it to Todd or Barb that a similar size uh, you mentioned like New Elm New Prague that also have it and we can just yeah. look up to see what their regulations are. yeah certainly can uh, you just 
If you can get that to Todd, he'll distribute it to all of us yep. just for background information. Yep, yep, we sure can, we sure can. Um, yeah, and there's a small sample of people here that are, are with the, the cause, I guess, for lack of a better term. I know there's a, uh, a group of about 60, 65 members that are all interested in this. Uh, of course, I'm sure it would require things like permits and, and there's some revenue opportunity for the city there as well. Um, but uh, uh, just something I think we can, we can push along, so. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, any further questions? Or is there anybody else here tonight who wants to speak? Or you're uh, the guess, delegate? Uh, I don't know. I guess if anybody else has anything to add, you got, okay. Right. I guess Sean will come up and. Hi, Sean. Hi. I'll just ask you to do the same. State your name and your address. for the Sean meeting. Kennedy, 1922 Bullard Street, St. Peter, Minnesota. Thank you. Um, we kind of got this ball rolling. Um, we just kind of figure if this snowmobile association can get to and from town, I think it's feasible that uh, side by side should be get able to get in or to and from town also. Um, there are some people that have $40,000 invested in these machines and what good is a machine in a garage if you can't drive it to and from town. Um, I've also been in touch with the Chief of Police, Matt Rocco. Um, there are some people that really wanted to push it, like just full-blown, drive it, whatever. Um, we're not asking for that at this point. Uh, Matt Rocco asked me to specifically start, can we focus on to and from town like the snowmobile regulations are in town? Um, lawn and garden, compost site, working as the city of St. Peter has them, uh, state of Minnesota also has them, water and flower gardens. If we could use them in that aspect, to and from town. Put us on a probation period, to and from town. Um, let us use them for work, gardening. Um, I'm Todd's neighbor. My neighbor had my side by side all weekend hauling two pallets of sand down this hill instead of a wheelbarrow because I can get it in there. Um, that's all we're asking. Once this probation period's done and all the laws are good, law enforcement, cops, everybody are happy with the outcome of it, then we can come to another meeting and proceed further, open up a bigger window of what we can do with it. But all we're asking is for a small window, just a chance to get us to and from town or let us use them bag and leaves, go to the compost site, do stuff like that. Go down to Keeley's, get wood chips, back them in a yard that you can't get a trailer in. Snow removal. Snow that's removal. another big one. Um, that's all we're asking for. I mean, and as far as street legal, if you guys want to boil it down, make them street legal. Make sure before you get a permit, make sure they have blinkers, headlights, mirrors, whatever. If they have to be safe for the road, fine, so be it. Everybody that has a machine is going to do it. I mean, you have some people at $40,000. What's another $200 for a blinker set or whatever? I mean, that's all we're asking. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate your time tonight. And since this isn't an agenda item, we won't discuss yep, it at our that. meeting tonight. Yep, yep, but yep. I, I think you probably got somebody who knows a little bit about <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we knew, the city And we knew that. I went down and talked to Barb. So that's we excellent. knew this is just a, mm -hmm. let's have you guys hear it. And then if it makes it to the agenda, we know the money that's going to come out of our pocket to get it on the agenda. We know that. We're willing to pay that. I mean, but all we're asking is for your guys' ears just to open it up so we can use them. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you again for your time. We appreciate uh, taking the time to come down and speak with us. And um, If I could, Nick, send me some information. That would be great. And yep. um, I will mention um, there is a process within the city code for folks to petition a change in the ordinance. Um, so, Nick, when you send me that information, I'll send you the link back, and then if you want to distribute, just so that you know kind of the options that are out there and how it works. Yep. Sounds good. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so you. much. Right, Have a great night. Thank you guys for your time. So, this is the last call if there's anybody else who wishes to address the council on any matter whatsoever. 
All right, hearing none, thank you everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. All right, we are going to move on to approval of the consent, ag uh, consent agenda. The consent agenda um, begins on page, hmm. let's see, page nine of the packet and concludes with the resolution on page 31. The resolution approves the following budget is budgeted purchases in excess of $10,000 to Gish Electric for re a replacement KSB pump. The following employee, employee appointments are approved at the wages indicated within the packet. That's on page 31. Uh, the following individuals appointed as election judges for 2022 elections, again on page 31 of the packet. And the following business license applications are approved contingent upon payment of a licensing fee and compliant with city code regulations, on sale liquor to the American Legion in the Capitol Room, Sunday sales to the American Legion, off sale liquor to River Rock, temporary gambling licenses for St. Peter Youth Wrestling at Knights of Columbus, and the following advisory board, up board appointment of Matthew Larson to the Planning and Zoning Commission, and wage changes for the following seasonal um, uh, employees, which are listed on page 32. Is there a, oh, and of course, the schedule of, dis of disbursements for June 9th through June 22nd, 2022. Does anybody have, I, uh, actually, let's back up. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So move. Second. Is there any discussion? Carrie. Well, earlier today I had asked our city administrator um, some questions about on page 28 um, of the consent agenda and the bill list, just what the grant was for for the St. Peter ambassadors and how that worked. And I learned about pass through dollars. And Todd, I was wondering if you could share what you told me about that information. So, That's this um, expenditure relates to Blues Fest. And um, we do have a few organizations, and I can't tell you the exact number. Maybe Sally might know it off the top of her head. I didn't prep her for this. But there's maybe a half a dozen or so where entities that put on events or other activities within the community receive funds. In this instance, um, these folks were allowed a grant through Prairie Lakes Arts Council, very similar to what we see with um, Rock Bend Folk Festival is another example of that for lots of reasons, um, often related to their tax status, um, they can't receive the grant directly. And so the grant is provided to the city of St. Peter and we're their fiscal agent for the purposes of that grant and then we distribute that money to them. So you'll see that on occasion throughout these. Um, again, maybe there's a half a dozen or so that we see throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Yeah. Um, question on the liquor license for the Legion. Is that the same? Are all the liquor licenses the same cost within the city or do the clubs receive a reduced rate? Some, some cities have a reduced rate for clubs versus regular businesses. That's a wonderful question. If you go and look on your fee schedule, there is a reduced option for clubs. However, the Legion and the other club that we have within St. Peter, the Redmond Club, still apply for their license under the public use. That way they don't have to confirm membership because they're public use. So in essence, in St. Peter, they're all treated exactly the same. Thank you. Additional questions, Emily. I'm uh, just wondering about the, um, the transit compliance manager. I know that um, Todd, you had mentioned that you were wanting someone to start early to get some extra training and that looks like that has happened. Yep. Um, you're happy with this? Um, I, I maybe just visit a little bit about the the recruitment process for that. I was curious about that. Yeah, so this recruitment process is similar to what you've seen over the last year or two where we're much more active. We just don't put an ad out there, right? We're communicating and really pushing to find people to apply for these types of positions. Um, with the imminent retirement of your compliance manager, um, we had a little bit of a head start, so I'm happy about that because some of the things that the compliance manager does are things that other staff does not do. And so a training period, and as I think I mentioned to the MRBT board, my hope was to have a couple, maybe three weeks of overlap for that. Um, a lot of that relates to understanding and having some additional training related to drug and alcohol testing. Some of it relates to what we call the black cat system, which is the state reporting system that occurs. And so in this instance, we had, forgive me for not remembering, I want to say eight, 10, Barb, do you remember how many applicants we had? 
seven applicants, and so we interviewed four applicants. Um, Sally and I did the interviews together. We had a criteria, as you talked about in the past, how we um, review applications and then how we do an interview process. Um, the recommendation is to approve Sherry Terherney for this. Um, her background certainly is not in transit, so she hasn't been a part-time driver for us or anything like that. But a number of the things that she does within her current position, including the amount of hire and um, fire that she does at her current position, the state reporting and compliance, although it's not directly transferable, the processes are very similar for reporting on alcohol use and tobacco sales and those things, similar to Black Cat. Um, and so uh, from my perspective, she was the best candidate in the time frame that we were looking for for you. And so that's the basis for my recommendation. Great, thanks, Todd. Thank you. Any other questions? I, I, just one other yeah. aside. With all of these, we I think we've been very fortunate to have very qualified applicants. And certainly, as you know, our goal is, whether it's in transit or public works or wherever it is, police department, to try and ensure that we have employees that can compete for positions. But these positions are all open. And so um, folks who are not current employees certainly are encouraged to apply. And again, over the last year or two, we've been much more active in what I would call the recruitment, communicating with folks, reaching out to folks, um, and um, encouraging them to apply. Um, again, I think with this position, as with others you've seen, to get six, eight, 10, 12 applicants is really great. And in some ways speaks to what you do as a council and certainly some of the opportunities that you provide for additional training. And as we've talked about in other positions, you do some cool stuff. And so people want to be at a place where um, they get the opportunity to expand their horizons to some extent. And so I think that's not the only reason, but that's, that's not an unimportant reason either. It's an important reason why people continue to be interested here. And your staff has done a lot of work in the recruitment process. There's no doubt. Um, there's a lot of work that goes on in that. Has to today. It's a different world than it was five years ago, 10 years ago. We have to do that to get um, qualified applicants. So anyway, probably more than you wanted yeah. to know. But. <laughs> we asked the question. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? All right. The item before us is the consent agenda. It's been mo moved and seconded. And so I think we're ready to take a vote. If you'd call a roll, please, Barbara. Mayor Noel. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Pettis. Aye. Council Member Graham. Aye. Council Member Sharstrom. Aye. Council Member Bluflat. Aye. Council Member DeVos. Aye. The resolution is approved. Uh, we have one item of unfinished business today. That is the adoption of a resolution awarding bids for fire station project bid package number two. So mayor members, if I could, the information starts on page 33 and Jeremy, as you see, is in the audience who's one of the folks that works for RW Carlstrom and has been taking care of us related to this project. Jeremy's here as my backup to make sure that I don't mess it up and they're the ones that do the specifications and make sure that the bids are taken appropriately and provides all that information. There's a lot of great information within your packet. I think an abbreviated version again starts on page 33. As you may recall, and the reason that this is bid package number two is because you did take action on bid package number one, but there are a number of areas where you rejected bids that either would be rebid or through an alternate purchase process based on your purchase policy. And so I can expand on that if you want, but you've heard that that discussion a few times. Um, what you have here is for a major portion of the project, at least from a dollars and cents standpoint, a significant portion of the project. And this was put together in conjunction with your construction managers and your architect. This provided an opportunity for a review of a different style door of the bifold doors, or maybe we call them accordion doors. We've talked about it using that terminology before. And so Jeremy and the team there at RW took the bids and put together these options that are available. The recommendation from staff, which includes your construction manager, um, your architect, and your city administrator, who's the least expert on garage doors, is that you accept option number four. Um, so option number four provides for regular, not exactly, but what we might call roll-up garage doors on the west side of the building. And that's what was thought of from the start of the process, although it would be very cool to have the bifold or accordion doors on, on both the west side and the east side. And the accordion doors on the east side are what we might call the front of the building. Um, the recommendation is really based on a couple of different things, keeping in that vein 
um, being sensitive to the budget constraints that you have, this option provides for about a 15 or 16,000 savings. If you put the accordion doors on both sides, um, you'd be in for a couple extra hundred thousand more dollars. And as you know, um, you're already long on project about four hundred and forty, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And so we want to be budget sensitive while certainly meeting the objectives of durability, usability, and it's a fire service and things we want things to work effectively, efficiently, and a little bit quickly. And so as you know, um, the project is designed so that trucks enter after service from the west side of the building. So having a little bit slower roll-up door isn't as big a deal, but on the front, um, the accordion or bifold doors are much faster and also are easier to see when you are leaving the station so that you don't bump into them. Where at a certain time when you have a roll-up door, even in your maybe home garage, once it kind of gets above your windshield, you can't tell whether it made it all the way up or not. You're just trusting that it is, or you're maybe like me, listening for the sound to stop. Um, maybe that isn't the best scenario. We want drivers of this large equipment that you own to be able to see fully. Um, so those are some of the primary reasons for that. But certainly any of these options are options you can choose under the bid process that was in place. And they include really the nice accordions on both sides, some different styles of accordions. Um, this is a more off-the-shelf accordion type door that we investigated after the initial um, bid process. Um, this has been again reviewed by your construction management team and your architect team and they feel really good about the purpose and use of these doors and have afforded you some potential savings. Um, I'm happy to answer questions if you're looking for something more substantial or technically oriented. Again, Jeremy's here to make sure that I don't mess it up. Um, but there's a resolution included in your packet. Um, also on page 34, you'll see an image that shows the FF30 doors. And so those um, more regular off-the-shelf doors from door engineering as a part of that. And then you'll see the bids um, as they're broken down and then an overall analysis of your total bid cost. I will mention just so that we're all on the same page that this reduces your overall project cost by about $15,000 just compared to the last number because we did have a number inserted previously um, that got you to that 430, 440-ish over your budget target. Um, again, there's information including your pack and the resolutions on page 43. Uh, thank you very much. Questions for Todd or for Jeremy? Harry and then Daryl. Uh, I just had a question about the doors and any supply chain issues. So I'll let Jeremy, if you want to come up and talk about that, I think we're in as good a shape with these as any doors that we would find out there. Yep. Um, if, in terms of the, the one that I guess Todd is pointing you to, to, to approve, there'd be two different style doors, um, so two different lead times, but uh, with the fourfold, those are made at Door Engineering, which is a company based out of formerly Soda, now in Mankato. Um, they're a, a product that they've told us is, you know, their lead time is actually quite well. And like Todd said, being that these doors probably aren't going to be installed till next spring, we've got plenty of time in front of us to, to get ahead of any lead times. Um, sectional doors are one thing that in today's times have really took a hit with lead times, but even those on the extreme level are you know, four to five month lead time. So still we have adequate time to award, get those things in the pipeline and, and get them by next spring when we need them. So I don't see any scenario you pick on, on this sheet of the six options, you wouldn't have an issue getting these doors before we would need them, so. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Daryl. Um, the full vision sectional doors, are they all clear or is there? There's aluminum rails. So I think the, the style of the door has a, um, well, the, the color can be selected. I think what the architect has indicated is a red to kind of just play off the fire station color. So you'll have aluminum framing around them with kind of a full vision panel. So it, from a distance, you see a lot of glass, but you still have kind of the red accent color around framing them to, to get that aesthetic look. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Um, hearing none, the resolution before us is on page 43 of the packet. Directing construction manager at risk to enter into contracts with low bidders for bid package number two for the 2022 fire station project. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Councilmember Johnson? Aye. Councilmember Pettis? Aye. Councilmember Rand? Aye. Councilmember Sharstrom? Aye. Councilmember Bruflat? Aye. Councilmember DeVos? Aye. Aye. 
The resolution is approved. Thank you very much. Mr. Jeremy, Mr. thanks for being here. You're welcome. Thanks. I will mention as an aside, but certainly related to the fire station project, our goal and our plan continues to be to have a groundbreaking on July 18th. So watch for more information on that. It would be great to have um, certainly lots of folks there. Um, it's really an historic event within our community. It's been a long time since we built a fire station. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> um, that'd be great. So anyway, watch for more information on that. Thank you. Uh, under new business, our first item is the adoption of a resolution appointing a uh, community development director. So, Mayor, members, the information starts on page 44 within your packet, so you can see it all there with the resolution on page 46, I believe. Um, this is the culmination of a lot of work and effort on a lot of folks' parts, and I, I certainly want to take a few moments um, to thank all of the folks that attended um, the public meet and greet we had a great number of folks and other organizations that participated. So that was wonderful and we got some feedback, which was wonderful, um, not only from council members, but certainly from those folks as well. Um, so it's, it's my job to make a recommendation to you and the recommendation that I have for you is to appoint Ben Baker. Again, we had, I think, eight applicants in this one. We interviewed three. Most of you, I think, participated in that interview process. Certainly with the feedback that we received from the public forums and certainly the forum with the city council, there were questions and other things. Frankly, not everyone checked every box. And so part of the goal is to make sure that we're answering questions if there are questions. Or as an example, if we have someone that maybe wasn't quite as articulate at, in some portion of the interview process, um, did we find out from previous employers or current employers? Or did we watch, which I did, other council meetings to see how they did in front of a council or a planning and zoning board to make sure that um, they could meet the standards that I think we have within St. Peter. And so with all of that together along with the um, what we call the scoring portion of it, it's the recommendation is Ben Baker. The salary would be at $80,000 which is slightly less than your previous community development director um, left that. 90. Or 90, I'm sorry, did I say 80? 90. And so that's included as a part of the resolution here as well. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I would provide one other note that if you do approve it tonight, uh, we would communicate with Ben this evening or tomorrow. And his plan would be to start here. I believe it says August 8th is the tentative start date. Um, so in these instances, I make an offer um, to those that are going to be recommended and look for their acceptance contingent on your approval. So we do things like tell them, um, don't you know, submit a resignation on your current job until you hear the council's approved it and those types of things. And so that's the case with this as well. Happy to answer any questions. I, I, again, I do think, as I mentioned earlier with applicants, we had a great, um, a, a really nice list of very good, kind, um, experienced people in certain areas within that kind of checklist. And so it was great that you had um, some, some wonderful people to interview as a part of this process. So again, happy to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions for Todd? Well, I'll just thank Todd and, and everybody who was involved in the search process and all of the candidates. I, I think it was an excellent process and uh, uh, went very well. Yeah. Let me mention one other thing. One of you asked me this before, so what do we do with candidates that are not being recommended? So in just about every instance, I talk to them personally and say, you know, you are not the candidate that's going to be recommended at this point, um, but things could change, and so we do try and alert them. There are occasions, not in this instance, but there are occasions where I end up having to leave a message because of the time constraints or other things, and we encourage them to call back, and some do and some don't, um, but that is part of our overall process. We don't want this to be a surprise to other candidates. We don't think that that's the way to treat folks, and so we try diligently to reach out to them. All right, last chance for questions. Hearing none, the resolution before us is on page 46 of the packet, a resolution appointing Benjamin Baker as Community Development Director. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Having a motion and a second, would you call the roll please, Barb? Councilmember Pettis? Aye. Councilmember Ram? Aye. Councilmember Shirstrom? Aye. Councilmember Blue Aye. Councilmember DeVos? Aye. Aye. Mayor Noel? Aye. Aye. The resolution is approved. Next up, adoption of a resolution approving a request to assign a Cambria lease. So this, um, Madam Mayor and members, um, Jim wrote the memo for this and he's talked with you a couple of times in the closed session about this issue. So I'll turn it over to Jim. 
Thank you, Council Members, Mayor. Uh, this involves the Cambridge University. It's located at Front Street and Broadway. Uh, the city entered into a, a lease for that property with Stan Davis a number of years ago, uh, back in uh, 1990, matter of fact. In 2000, Stan was getting older and he assigned the lease to his son, Mark. Well, in the last 22 years, Mark didn't get younger either and he is w wishing to assign his interest to uh, a company that he's involved in, Cambria Real Estate Holdings Limited. Also, as long as he was making the assignment, the request was made to extend the lease, which currently goes to 2032, and they've agreed that 2050 would be a nice, nice round number. And so they're asking to extend it. it uh, gives them some stability. It also provides stability for a city knowing that they're going to be there and they've got a major investment in that building. So with that, I'd recommend that the, the uh, and I, their attorney and I worked on the uh, agreements and I'd recommend that you accept the lease assignment and the, uh, and the extension of lease to October 1, 2050. Stand for any questions you may have. Any questions? If I can provide one clarification, this is for the land, not the building. Um, the city does not own the building. We own the land that the building sits on right. top of. Yep, it's a bit of an unusual arrangement. Carrie. I think maybe members of the public might be curious about what the pros and cons are of having an extended lease. And I know that's something that we talked about as well. Could you sure. speak to that? Well, the, the pros are you keep them there, that they that they can ex can, ten, ten, can can continue. They've been there for a number of years. Stan Davis, I believe, started on that site as a creamery back in the 1940s. So it's been a long-term arrangement. They, like Todd said, they did build the building, so they've got a major investment in there. It's an important part of their business. It provides stability for the city. Con is, there's a building there. Um, you know, I mean, it could be a levy, it could be a park, so I guess that would be your con. So I think at this point, given the period of time, in my opinion, the pros do outweigh the cons. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Hearing none, the resolution before us on page 49 of the packet calls for the acceptance of the lease agreement of of a lease by and between the city of St. Peter and Cambria. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Would you call the roll, please? Council Member Ring. Aye. Council Member Shellstrom. Aye. Council Member Ruth Aye. Council Member DeVos. Aye. Mayor Noel. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Pettis. Aye. The resolution is approved. Next up is the adoption of a resolution approving execution of a memorandum of understanding with school district number 508, community education. Mayor members, this has been in place for now more than a decade. It really started before that, as you can see in the memo that we provided. This is an exchange of dollars for services from community education. If you want me to get into this, I'm certainly happy to do that. But this contract provides approximately $12,000 to the city, which we use in specific programs that are designed to help youth principally in leadership development. And so we do that for our recreation department. Maybe the history is significant, but um, this was done at a time when community had had faced some serious cuts in state funding. And so this was an opportunity to potentially more efficiently deliver those services. Um, we plan for these dollars as part of your recreation budget. And so it really, it's just happenstance that it always shows up this time of year because this is, you know, from the start when it was originally put in place. If you weren't interested in continuing with this, and there are some reasons maybe not to, but if you wanted to stop, my suggestion might be is that you continue this year and stop in a future year since the wheels are rolling with this already for this year. But one of the challenges is that if there are additional significant cuts or community ed through the school district, through the district, by the way, decides not to provide these resources for you, these are now well-established programs that you are identified as having and it would put you in the position of having to stop programs potentially or change fee structure on programs that weren't really originally yours. 
I don't know that that's going to happen today, um, but it is something that we want to alert you to and make sure that you are aware of. And there is some risk in that in future years. But again, for this year, kind of the wheels are in motion, so I encourage you to at least continue to do this year. And if you think you want to stop this, have an additional discussion with the district, the opportunity that's coming up in October, potentially. Um, and the resolution for this, again, entering into the contract, is located in your packet, and I believe that's on page 56. 55. 55, thank you. Yep. Happy to answer any questions, Madam Mayor, and members that you might have. Any questions for Todd? Uh, Emily. I don't have a question. Just wanted to say that I think this looks really great. I love looking through this list of programs on you know, page 53 and 54 and just all that is offered here. It's a nice, well-rounded list of activities, really important things to fund for our youth. Um, and I just think it's great. I think it's a great example of partnership within local units of government as well that are trying to provide services efficiently. And you have lots of those, but this is one that well, you got to take action on because there's a kind of Stop. Would you like me to repeat all that, Madam Mayor? <laughs> Maybe my voice, my voice booms far enough where that wasn't an issue, probably. <laughs> I think we're good. We're all right. Along. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Um, all right. If there are no further questions, the resolution before us authorizing execution of youth development memora memorandum of understanding is on page 55 of the packet. Is there a motion to approve? So, so moved. moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. <laughs> Call the roll, please. Aye. 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 The resolution is approved. Next up, adoption of a resolution approving lease amendment with, with new singular wireless. Hi, Pete. Hello. Madam Mayor and City Council, uh, New Singular is one of three companies that we have on our Broadway water tower. And uh, they have been a loyal customer of ours for about 20 years. Um, they're looking at doing some expansion up there uh, by adding a generator to their existing uh, infrastructure or their building that's on site there. And so with that, we usually increase the lease amount just a little bit. Uh, the amount we agreed to was $200. Uh, you can see the terms uh, in the agreement there. Um, and, and it is a good lease with those guys and we have renewed it for up to 20 additional years and we anticipate them being a customer of ours. Uh, with your signature or with your authorization today it would allow the city administrator to sign the contract and proceed with an agreement for the next 20 years. Thank you very much. Any questions for Pete or Todd? Do you have anything to add? No, I can tell you that we often have calls from companies that are looking to reduce the amount of lease that users pay for space on your water tower. And so based on that data and other data that Pete sees through MMUA, we believe that this lease is certainly within the marketplace. And again, the increase here is driven by them wanting to have a generator on the ground. Right. Where's, it, where's it physically located from the water tower? Uh, just to the south. There's two buildings south of the actual tower, inside the gate, inside the fencing there. The generator would be located west of the uh, first, second building. West of second building, okay. So the buildings that are up there, if you haven't seen that, they're about the size of smallish ice houses. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the generator would fit on a 4 by 10 concrete pad, so. We do burn up there, so we like to keep things away from us when we're burning. <laughs> they probably would too. <laughs> yeah, they agreed upon. Put their building out. <laughs> Thank you. Any additional questions? Hearing none, the resolution before us is on page 67 of the packet. Uh, resolution authorizing execution of the third lease agreement with New Singular on the Broadway Water Tower site. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Aye. 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 The resolution is approved. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, you. Thanks. Uh, moving on to the reports section of our agenda. 
Uh, the only report I have is that I last week was able to attend the League of Minnesota Cities Conference in Duluth. It was a wonderful opportunity to uh, learn, to network with other people in, in city government, and I just think uh, Minnesota's really lucky to have such a wonderful League of Cities. They really provide uh, excellent services to the cities of, of Minnesota and uh, great development opportunities for city council members and mayors and administrators. So um, I didn't know if Dustin or Ben had anything they wanted to add because they were in attendance as well. There was Put some, the spot. there was definitely some great sessions. Um, go back to my notes, I can take notes. Um, talking about housing. Um, just some different things and ideas that other towns are doing to kind of break the mold. Um, green projects, sustainability, that was another session. A lot of good stuff, so hopefully we'll have some things moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Dustin? I uh, wasn't prepped by <laughs> Mayor Noel to have notes uh, ready to go. It was really nice to see in the breakout sessions so many different city leaders and elected officials going to the Green Step session and looking at the process and looking at sustainable and looking at growth and how you can make steps that are digestible and in some cases just record some of the things that you're doing and then take steps as a city to do better. I would not have known you weren't prepared, Dustin. Thanks for <laughs> <laughs> uh, that. Was the, that was the only report for me at this time. Mayor members, I have a few that are listed here and then one additional, maybe two additional that I'd like to mention. First of all, the DOT open house, which is coming up. Um, that is actually tomorrow um, from 4.30 to 7 here in the gym. And so that's not exactly a project or a open house about projects that we have, but there are projects that are, that are likely to happen within our community and the surrounding area. And so this is an attempt by DOT to have kind of a bigger one size come on y'all and, and see, but we'll have some staff there for parts of it. Certainly you're welcome to attend. We'd encourage the public to attend and really hear what's going on. And it illustrates some of the partnership that we have going on with DOT. So we're excited about that. Um, Fourth of July closures and meeting schedule. So um, non-emergency offices will be closed on the 4th of July. Emergency offices will still be open. Um, wanted to mention that the pool will be open um, some limited hours, so check the website, but the pool will be open. It customarily is on the 4th of July. Pete and his team and Chief Groco and his group have lots of activities going on over the next few days through the entire holiday through Tuesday. And so watch for them out and about. Um, there's a lot of support that Pete and the team provide, picnic tables and all kinds of different things that are going from here to there and all over the place. So um, you do a great job in assisting those organizations that want to provide um, activities. So again, probably the biggest activity right is the old fashioned 4th of July, which uh, the parade is on the 4th and that goes right by here, right by the community center. As a part of that, we want to mention there'll be some great stuff within the hot sheet tomorrow, reminding folks about parade etiquette. And so a couple of things that I want to mention, please don't reserve your spot five days in advance. That just isn't necessary. Um, maybe the day before, maybe 36 hours before, um, is plenty, but we certainly try and be respectful of the folks that own homes along the parade route and that they see that boulevard as part of their yard and so please take care of it accordingly. And we don't provide security for your really nice tent or your really nice lawn chair. Um, and so please do that. Also remember that folks want to make sure and maybe this year this isn't appropriate, um, but in past years Maybe it rains right before the 4th and people want to get their lawn mowed so as all their friends and neighbors come and join the celebration with them. But if your chair or your blanket is in the way, well, that's a bad thing for getting that lawn mowed. We also want to make sure that people know, please don't put a tarp out or put plastic out. Um, you put that out even a few hours before and that has the potential to kill the grass worse than it is for the next year. And so we want to encourage people to think about that and pick up after themselves. Um, it's most of the, the tour, or, or I'm sorry, the parade is along a route that is residential in nature. And so picking up all those Tootsie paper wrappers, those types of things um, is really important. And there are garbage receptacles and restrooms along the path of the parade. So we really encourage that parade etiquette. Um, let me make sure that I'm hitting all my list here. 
Um, I think that's the big thing. If people have questions or concerns or other information that they want, um, the Chamber of Commerce is the host for this event, and they do the parade lineup and who can be in the parade and all those things, so they have some rules about that. But you can certainly find more information about the activities of the park, which include brats and chicken and ice cream and lots of fun and music. And it's, it really is a slice of Americana. It really is. Um, the last one that I have, well, actually last two that I have, is just to mention that Thursday the 30th is the last day of the Holocaust exhibit here at the library, which if you have not seen it, you got to go. It is super enlightening and powerful in many ways, so it's really worth your time and effort to see that. So again, um, we were fortunate to have that here at the library. Lots of staff work went into making that happen and moving things around, but the last day is the 30th. And then the last one that I have, Madam Mayor, is that um, um, absentee ballots are now starting to be available at the courthouse. So for the primary that's occurring here in August, you can get an absentee ballot at the courthouse. I think that's all I have for my list, Madam Mayor. All right, Daryl. Uh, we have council work session on Tuesday then? Oh, I was going to mention that. So the last time I recall talking about this is that we were kind of up in the air as to whether you wanted to be together on that Tuesday or not. We certainly, I can always find issues for you to talk about. However, we had a couple of planned issues that are still in the works that I will not have done um, for that meeting. So normally it kind of hurts my feelings if you don't want to get together, but this time it would not hurt my feelings if um, you want to have other plans. There's always work to do, but um, um, if you want to spend more time with your families, I think <coughs> this is certainly a good chance to make that happen. That wasn't your question, Daryl. <laughs> I, have, I have fire meeting that night. So. <laughs> I would be perfectly fine taking the holiday week off. Okay. Then we'll plan not to have one. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. No, thank you guys for being flexible on these. Uh, Brad. Um, I just uh, I have a little report on uh, June fifteenth. I at Region Nine Development Council had their annual first time in three years bus tour. Um, and it, it was uh, great. It's uh, Region 9 is made up of nine counties in the general area, although that's not why it's Region 9. Um, but it was great traveling around with uh, representatives from other cities in, in the area. Um, had stops at a uh, had, had stops at an organic farm slash campground, as well as um, uh, the Springfield Community Center, where the city administrator there. Um, did a, the presentation on their struggles with housing. Um, one thing they're doing is they, well, they first tried a 50% tax abatement, didn't get any, but now they're doing a five year 100% tax abatement and they're finally getting um, some traction on housing. It's, so we're, we're not the only ones struggling. Mankato strangely was quiet on the struggling with housing, but, um, but uh, then we stopped at a distillery in New Ulm um, and who got their funding through Region 9. Um, the, amount of, uh, the amount of funding and effort um, that Region 9 puts into our area, um, not just Mankato, but the surrounding area trying to develop business is really admirable. Um, one of the things, uh, I, MnDOT did a presentation. I think we should be thankful about where we are, uh, just the number of projects that we're seeing in the St. Peter area, in St. Peter to Mankato, compared to the rest of the Region 9 area. Um, we're seeing a lot of development here, and I, I think that's we, we should consider ourselves lucky. Um, and the last thing, um, one of a well, one of the representatives uh, from Nicollet County is Ian Omar, who's also on our ADA. I've known her since 2013. Ian, um, um, her well, Ian was born in, born in Somalia. Her family moved to Syria, and then eventually emigrated here. Um, she had incredible praise for our police chief. We were at, we were talking about the hiring process, and she just uh, said we made a great job, great choice on our police chief. Um, her brother works out with him at Anytime Fitness, and he's always engaging with her brother. Um, her brother uh, had great praises for him. So I think it, our police chief talked about community outreach, and he's he he he's living it. He's actually doing what he said he would, and I think we should all be really happy to get that kind of uh, feedback for for uh, Chief Croco. So, Thank and that's you. all I have. I can go one step further on that, Brad. Police Chief Croco had a great presence last night at the tea event that a couple of us were present at. You had multiple officers there. You had Police Chief Croco engaging with the community and making real connections. Mm -hmm. 
Emily. Okay. I have a brief statement to make, um, not related to Rita or anything else. Um, here we go. In the past few days, since the overturning of Roe by the Supreme Court, I have spoken with numerous members of our community. The responses have overwhelmingly been grief, numbness, helplessness, and outrage. I want to state on the record that I oppose the Supreme Court's decision. All people should have agency over their own bodies. In 1993, Ruth Bader Ginsburg said the following in her Senate confirmation hearing, quote, the decision whether or not to bear a child is central to a woman's life, to her well-being and dignity. It is a decision she must make for herself. When government controls that decision for her, she is being treated as less than a fully adult human responsible for her own choices, end quote. To all our citizens who have, want to, or will bear children, to those who do, do or will not, and to everyone else concerned about this egregious dehumanization and transgression of personal liberty, I mourn the overturning of Roe. I stand in solidarity with you and will fight for equal rights for all human beings in this country. Thank you. Does anybody have any other reports that they'd like to make tonight? Hearing none, I think we are ready to adjourn. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Wait, I, uh, I, I can step out too. Back on 1995. Oh, okay.